Nothing can hinder. Nurturing every learner. Together we soar. Make dreams score. Amidst the challenges we face, a journey of learning wins the race. Education for all. Let's rise, not fall. This is Dead Ed Science Ed TV. A video lesson of Wanjimakar Ed National High School. School Division of Pangasinan 2. Hello there students. Welcome to Science Ed TV. This is Mom Laverne, your science teacher. Be excited as we learn a new lesson for today. Today, you are going to learn about the structure of matter based on its shape and molecular arrangement. This will help you explain the properties of solids, liquids, and gases based on the particle nature of matter. If you compare the pencil, laptop, and a cell phone, surely you will say that the laptop is the heaviest while the pencil seems to be the lightest. On the other hand, the cell phone may not be as heavy as the laptop, but it is not as light as the pencil, right? What does this indicate? It means the objects or things around us may be light or heavy, or these things have the so-called mass. Mass is the measure of the amount of matter in an object. These objects show that they occupy space, and it is called volume. Volume is the measure of the space occupied by an object. So what do we call these objects that have mass and volume? We call them matter. How about the air inside the balloon? Does it have mass? Does it occupy space? The air placed inside the balloon occupies space. Thus, we are able to inflate balloons. Air also adds mass to balloons. Hence, Air inside the balloons are considered as matter. How about heat and light? Do they have mass? Do they occupy space? Heat is energy transit, and light is a form of energy. They do not have mass, and they do not occupy space. So, they are not considered as matter. Matter can be traced to the nature of particles composing them. The particles of solid, liquid, and particle of gas. One example of matter noted for its variety in physical form is water. Water is common substance that we encounter every day. The iceberg, the ocean water, and the vapor in the sky are all considered water, but they are at different state. Who figured out that all matter is composed of different tiny particles called atoms? It was the Greek philosophers Leucippus and Democritus at 5th century BC who had an idea that all matter consisted of small uncountable particles called atomus and later on came to be known as atoms. All forms of matter are made up of atoms that are in constant random motion. Scientists call these characteristics as particulate nature of matter. Ancient philosophers' idea about atoms became a theory until John Dalton did many observations and results of several experiments done by other scientists and formulated the so-called atomic theory. Early scientists attempted to explain the composition and behavior of matter through the so-called molecular theory of matter. This theory has the following assumptions. 1. All matter is made up of particles called molecules. 2. There are spaces between molecules. 3. Molecules are constantly moving. 4. Molecules attract one another. This theory was later on improved and named as kinetic molecular theory. A molecule is a particle consisting of two or more atoms combined together in a specific arrangement. It is an electrically neutral particle and it is the smallest particle of an element or compound that can exist independently. For example, 
a molecule of water consists of an oxygen atom combined with two hydrogen atoms. Atoms of the same element can also combine to form a molecule. For example, oxygen in the air consists of oxygen molecules which are made up of two oxygen atoms. Going back to our previous examples, we said that the iceberg the ocean water and the vapor in the sky are all considered water. So, why do they look different from each other? This originates on the particle nature of water. The particle theory of matter. It describes the phases of matter at the microscopic level. It also explains the differences in the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. Moreover, the theory also explains the changes of phases of matter. In an iceberg, the particles are packed closely together and vibrate a little in place but in fixed positions. Icebergs considered as solid. Its particles are held together by strong forces. Solids have definite shape and volume. They are incompressible. Why does a solid behave differently from a liquid or a gas? This question can be answered using the concept on the molecular structure of solids, liquids, and gases. It is just like your behavior inside the classroom. During discussion, you sit close together with your seatmate. Let's take an example, the air inside the balloon. The particles of air inside the balloon are in constant motion and are far apart from each other. They are considered as a gas since their particles can move to any space. This is also your behavior after your discussion or during dismissal. You go home or you go anywhere you want. When you inflate or deflate a balloon, its shape changes. Why? The shape changes because the air is a gas. Gas is a state of matter that has no definite shape and volume. The particles of a gas move very quick and fast, so they can break away quickly from one another. There is low attraction between particles of a gas than the particles of the same element in the solid or liquid state. The particles of water are closer to one another than the gas particles and they are in constant motion. Water in a glass is considered as liquid. Their particles move fast enough to overcome some of the attraction between them. The attraction between their particles are stronger than those in gases. Liquids do not have definite shape. And just like gases, they take the shape of their container. They slide past one another but stay together. Did you know that liquids have unique characteristics? A special property of liquid is a so-called surface tension. It is a force that acts on the particles at the surface of a liquid. Surface tension causes some liquids to form spherical drops like the beads of water. Another important property of liquids is the so-called viscosity. Viscosity is a liquid's resistance to flow. Usually, the stronger the attractions between the particles of a liquid, the more viscous the liquid is. For example, if we drop pebble in a different containers with honey, oil, and water, the pebble will sink to the bottom fastest in water, followed by oil, and last in honey. Therefore, honey is the most viscous liquid while water is the least viscous. Now, let's wrap things up. Matter is made up of tiny particles of atoms. Atoms are the smallest particles of matter. Molecules are atoms banded together. The states of matter are the physical forms in which a substance can exist. Shape is the external form or appearance of an object. Volume is the measure of how much space an object takes up. 
Surface tension is a force that acts on the particles at the surface of a liquid. Viscosity is a liquid's resistance to flow. Here is a table summarizing the characteristics of solid, liquid, and gas. Solid retains a fixed shape and volume. It follows the shape of the container which it occupies more liquid. Gas follows the shape and volume of its container. Solid particles are locked into place. Particles of liquid can slide past one another. The particles of gas can move past between one another. Solids and liquids are not compressible. Gases, on the other hand, can be compressed. In solids, space in between are unnoticeable space between particles. In liquid, there are little free spaces between particles. And in gas, lots of free space between particles. Lastly, solids does not flow. Liquid flows easily. Same is true with the gas. Learning.